7 o'clock, so we're going to call this meeting to order. Uh, could we do a roll call? Patrick Burke? Here. Gary Berkman? Here. Mark Chiefman? Here. Sharon Barkema? Teresa Mosman? Rick McDaniel? Here. Jane Turner? Here. Okay, so we have a quorum, so we can proceed. Uh, welcome everybody. And uh, we don't have any communication requests, I don't believe. We are going to have a presentation from uh, some of our students who are auditioning for Allstate on Saturday. Since we talked about wanting to have some stuff from kids uh, at our board meeting, so um, Mr. Howell has brought a trio that's going to sing a little bit for us on Saturday. They will go into a room with a judge and an adult pitch giver and they will sing excerpts from several of the songs that they have been preparing for the Allstate auditions. So we're going to give you a little mini taste of that. It won't be like an entire audition, but it will be a little bit of an audition. If you guys want to come down here, come, come, come sing for us. <laughs> that would be fantastic. Why don't you introduce yourselves to Yes, yeah, so we're, we're going to get to that point. So the judge would say, good morning. And they would say, Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> and then the judge would say, would you please introduce yourselves and your voice part, starting with soprano. Good morning. My name is Kelsey Smith. I will be singing soprano too. Hi, my name is Morgan Schlichten. I'll be singing soprano. Oh, alto one. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, my name is Easton Smith, and I'll be singing baritone. And see, they're nervous, aren't they? Mm -hmm. And they'll be nervous on Saturday. But this is way worse than Saturday because they've got an audience and not just the judge. Um, do you have a pitch pipe, Mr. Hall? I, w I had my piano up, but it's like it needs to be updated. So, Morgan, do you have a pitch instrument? Perfect pitch. Okay, what are we going to be singing? <laughs> um, two pieces of the Nyan Nyan from measure 11 to measure 26 and then Deep River measure 5 to measure 12. <laughs> All right, go ahead and turn around so that the camera gets you. We'll look at it. It'll be true. This camera. We'll hear you. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we, we've worked watching. on how they need to stand, so it's important. <laughs> Simakahu when ya bidubida, 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 Simakahu
And they'll know what the cuts are on Saturday. It'll be super obvious. So it's really tricky. They have to sing everything a cappella. They go in there anonymous so the judge doesn't know what school they're from. Uh, we typically have a couple thousand kids try out statewide. We're looking for 600 in the chorus. So there's more or less, you know, 150 on each voice part uh, that are selected on Saturday. It's very competitive. Uh, it's at Hampton. They, these guys will be going to Hampton. I'm judging at another site. I could tell you, but then I'd have to kill you. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. But I, Mr. Howell and I have both been working with these kids all fall, and they are just doing a fantastic job, and I'm sure they're going to represent Belmont very well. And there are three other students that are also auditioning from Belmont. So, you know, good luck to, to you guys. And I'm hoping I hear really good news on my own. Thank you. Thanks for coming in on a short notice. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I need a motion to approve the agenda. I'll move to approve the agenda. Jane, is there a second? No. I don't care. Gary. Gary's got it. All right. He beat me to it. All right. All right, all in favor, say yes. 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 All right. Um, and then did you all get a chance to look at the minutes and the bills? Mm -hmm. And I know we've got sort of a partial financial statement. Okay. Um, and you should see these late bills just came out this evening. Mm -hmm. so, so you have this paper copy that's not on your digital copy. All right, I need a motion to approve last week, or last month's minutes, financial statements, and bills. I'll move to approve last month's bills and financial statement. Great. Thank you. Second? I'll second. Okay. <laughs> All in favor say yes. 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 Okay. Uh, we have a report from the Teacher Leader Committee. Thank you. Connie. You just told me to stand over here, so. <laughs> and if you could sing it. Oh, <laughs> yeah, thank you for lowering my level of concern. <laughs> uh, the Teacher Leadership Committee is made up of myself and two coaches, Kelly Stein and Christine Schultz. And Kelly is the <coughs> high school instructional coach, and Christine is the PK6 coach. We work together closely to assist teachers in meeting student needs, and we are assisted by team leads in each building. And I'm going to read these so I don't miss anybody. At the elementary, these team leaders are Amanda Walters, Kim Coolers, Nikki Jass, Wanda Torkelson, Kendra Hagen, and Angie Kinsett, and also Marty Marquardt. At the high school, our team leaders are Shannon Wadsley, Joel Bagley, Nikki Bach, Dina Minica, and Julie Isker. And if you see any of those people around town, you might give them a heads up or a thank you. They're really, really working hard to make a difference for our students. Our TLC team leaders model good character, technology leadership, they lead professional learning communities, and they support and guide staff development. This year, our staff development has been really aggressive, and it demands a lot of our staff. The new one-to-one -one initiative has been a challenge that our teachers have readily embraced. There are many exciting things going on in our buildings and our classrooms. And I would really welcome you to come into the buildings and see what's going on. You can walk into any classroom on any given day and see the laptops open and aggressively used. Uh, this year, our professional learning falls in the following categories, and this is in the order of importance. Technology integration at the elementary and secondary school is primary. Second, authentic intellectual work, and that's where we beef up the quality of our lessons. Uh, the secondary school is 712 is in the third and fourth year of that, and the elementary is in the first year. Um, another thing we're working on is MTSS and that's known as multi-tier system of supports. Formerly, you might have heard it called RTI, but that's where we make a difference for every student, whether they're high, low, or medium. And we're working on that in the K-3, the 4-6, and moving into that at the high school for all kids. And the fourth thing we're working on is curriculum work with an emphasis on reading. Please allow me to take a few minutes to give you a short rendition of what I've been up to this fall. Uh, I'm kind of spearheading staff development. I'm assisting teachers with technology, setting up and coordinating the FAST test to diagnose reading progress at Jacobson. And currently, I'm doing short-term projects and learning with three teachers at the high school and two teachers at Jacobson. Some of the things I'm doing, I'm assisting with authentic intellectual work, 
guiding work with curriculum manager, planning STEAM lessons with the elementary art teacher, STEAM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Art, and Math lessons, and developing lessons that allow students to create podcasts that go along with their reading books. Much of my coaching work centers on technology integration, and I'm finding that it's really exciting to work with the teachers, and two heads are better than one, and it's fun to have them come up with ideas and bounce them off of me and vice versa. Before I finish tonight, I want to thank you for allowing us to come and share with you tonight, and I hope that in the spring I'll be able to come back and give you kind of a recap of how the year's going. Now I'm going to hand it over to Kelly and Christine so they can tell you about what they've been doing in the buildings. I'm sorry. I don't have much of a voice, so not to bear with me. I just I've done coaching volleyball and took my voice away. So um, I didn't prepare a statement, I guess. But I just want to talk about. I invited you all to our um, our Google Classroom that we use for Power Lunch. Power Lunch is what the junior senior higher using is kind of our uh, universal MTSS time. Um, on Mondays, we have many lessons that are on things like digital citizenship. Um, Google tools and those kinds of things, study tips and strategies. So if you ever look at the About tab, you can see some of those different skills and lessons. <coughs> Turner and I are the ones that kind of partner up on that piece and we work on every Monday, work on those lessons together. Um, and then on the main stream page, <coughs> sorry, I'm trying to On the main stream page, you'll see just different um, tasks and tools, um, ed tools kids might use, um, resume building tips and tricks and, and assignments. Um, there's breakout EDUs, which is kind of like an online digital problem solving games and things like that. There's reading and math websites um, that kids can use to come build up some of their strategies. So um, I invited you all. It's super simple. When you go to your email, you click the big blue button that says join, and you're there. So, I'm there. Um, you don't actually have to do the assignments. <laughs> <laughs> but you can kind of see more like what we're introducing to the students. We're really encouraging teachers that when students are, if they're not working on their regular schoolwork, that it's a good, useful time that they can do with productive use of the computers as opposed to maybe trying to stream videos and, <coughs> and play non-educational games. Um, I am in four coaching cycles. I've got one person requesting another one, but they're corresponding periods, so we, we're going to wait until mid-November to start that one. won't go into a lot of details because I don't have voice left. Um, a lot of my day is helping teachers kind of find quick tech tools that might help with this, that, or the other, or solve little problems here or there. I kind of feel like sometimes I'm running out my head cut off. That, but that's okay. Um, and then starting next week, um, I'm hosting what we call Cabernet or Client Tech Corner, um, which will be <coughs> four times a week, Monday mornings, Monday after school, with Monday, Wednesday mornings, and Wednesday after school. We'll be highlighting different tech tools, um, tips, trips, and strategies, um, kind of a variety of things as teachers go through tech integration issues they're having, or problems they're having, or things they want to explore but they don't have time to explore. They tell me, we explore them, and then we do a quick little 20, 30 minute sessions on it for them. So they'll start and they'll be twice, like I said, it'll be four times a week, every week for a while. <laughs> <laughs> a while until I can get through the whole list, because it's growing every day. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how I spend the majority of my day right now. That and then with a lot of standards planning, which is scaling up a little bit now that we have um, social civic with brand new standards and science with brand new standards and some of those, working with those teachers on kind of some of those standards. Elementary, um, we've been working hard on getting our MTSS going, that multi tier system of support. K through three right now is deploying students, so they are deployed within those grades. We have, I'm not sure how many groups, there are about 19 people helping out right now, and so each of those groups have a different type of um, phonics, phonemic awareness type activity that they do with those kids that are maybe a little bit deficit in those skills or those higher order kids that have the skills they need for the grade level so we're pushing them ahead and pushing them on and forward into more aggressive skills that they will need as they grow up. Um, and we also utilize our specials teachers, our art, our PE, and our music and they have been going full force with it so it's been really good. Um, a major part of my MTSS time is spent with our L's and um, getting those. I'm using 
iPads right now because our technology is um, kind of hit and miss with our the demand that that program has. So we are um, utilizing iPads from the classrooms, general classrooms, and it's going very, very well. Um, we have right now 42. Monday we're going to be starting with 50 L's. And I, I'm not sure how much a total number of L's that we have in the school, but I know that I'm going to be helping with 50 of them. So that's what we do for that hour of MTSS. And when they're on that, that Imagine Learning program is a reading-based program, and it gets them those skills necessary to <coughs> integrate with the English language. And um, we've seen a lot of progress in some of those kids, so it's been very, very positive. Um, for the MTSS, for the other kiddos in our K through three, we're utilizing press strategies, and that's focusing on phonemic awareness, phonics, um, fluency, vocabulary, and comprehension. And it kind of goes in that order. And we uh, did decoding inventories to figure out where those kids were and their levels, and that's how we grouped them because we didn't have fast data yet. But now we have had fast data, so we're going to be taking that into consideration as well and moving groups because the groups should become fluid as the students are assessed periodically and progress monitored, so they should be moving as their skills improve. Um, other than that, with the press, I've uh, taken some teachers to Hampton because they've been doing in time, it's called there, and it's what I need. And so they were able to visit the K-1 building, K-1-2-3 building, I think it is. And um, we were able to watch different types of strategies that they use for their reading wind time. Um, working on right now getting four through six as well. We have some four through six teachers in training today and then I'll be there as well with them tomorrow with that press, press program. Um, and then hopefully we'll get them to Hampton as well for observation. Other than that, it's a lot of gathering data, working with teachers, getting them what they need. Um, uh, whatever anybody asks me to do, I just help them out. Can you tell us what FAST tests are? FAST is, uh, what does the acronym stand for, County? I don't remember. It's FAST Bridge Now. It's an assessment that we give them for reading. And it's early reading test for K-1, and then we have CBMs, which is triggering mm -hmm. based measurements, and that's just reading probes. And then there is an A reading, and that's the comprehensive piece. So we have, um, with the FAST Bridge, there's a lot of more a lot more data where it will show you specific skills that kids really excel at, mm -hmm. kids um, are doing grade level work at, or maybe skills that they need help with. So we kind of base, we'll base our interventions according to those skills that those students need. Mm -hmm. Could you, can you tell me what deploying is? Deploying is um, after we assessed kiddos and got their levels, we got together and discussed what kids go in which group. And we have some kindergartners in second grade with a second grade teacher with a group. And it's not a second grade group, it's just the, like they're working on phonics. Mm -hmm. And the teachers have kids coming in and out. There's third graders. There's a third grade group, but then there's a third second grade group. It's just a mixture of kids mm -hmm. and what skills that they need to work on. And um, it's just, it's all based on student need and data. So it's a lot of data-driven decisions in our building right now. So <laughs> pushing the data. Mm -hmm. Any questions? I just know sometimes as teachers we throw around acronyms yes. that yes. mean a lot to us and don't mean anything to the exactly. general public. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. More and more. <laughs> more and more. You can probably write yeah. a paragraph of acronyms. Yeah. yeah. We could be nasty. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, I'd, I'd beg your assistance. I'd like to explain a little bit about the <coughs> basics of the TLC program. TLC was something that's come about in Iowa in the last three years, and I really knew nothing about it when I came here to the state just now. But this is, the legislature voted this in three years ago, let's say. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, and it meant about uh, in excess of, pardon me? Four years. Four, Four years, years ago. ago. Okay. And it meant in excess of $200,000 to Belmont Clemmy Schools. Of that money, some of it has to go out with our open enrollment out students, since we have more open enrolled out than coming in. And we've used that money. Uh, we've hired three additional teachers, so these three teachers do not have a regular classroom assignment. 
they have offices instead. Although they're in the classroom a great deal, feel free to jump in here anytime if I'm Same misrepresenting way. anything. But uh, they're in the classrooms a great deal, but they have they have office space, and they we have hired replacements for each of these three teachers, and uh, uh, and we also have additional. Ten teachers, approximately, that That's are, correct, that 10. we pay an additional stipend for extra hours and days. Is that is that, that is about correct. the size of it? Yes. And what are some of the other uses of oh, that money? 12. The twelve mm -hmm. others. Okay. Really and what are some of the other uses of that fund? Uh, we have two of those leaders that are mentoring the new teachers, and those <clears throat> those other leaders uh, run the PLCs, professional learning communities. And they've done other things like design assessments and help with the press strategies and do extra training after school and those type of things. And monies um, from TLC can also will also go for PD, professional development. Right, and we're using some of it that way. We're sending right. people out to conferences, are we not? Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. And I, I sent a link to the website, <coughs> and that shows you what different trainings that the teachers have gone to and how we're using it mm -hmm. and our professional development days and some of those kinds of things. You can take a peek at that. Yes. One of the questions that was asked of me is yes, thank you. the question that was asked of me is, what exactly do these ladies do? And so that's basically it in a nutshell. Anything else you'd like to throw out as far as your, your duties and responsibilities now? As the year progresses, I think the the demands of us will increase. At the beginning of the year we do a lot of things that help get the teachers ready and assist them and a lot of things with technology and more and more we'll be moving into the classrooms to helping them design lessons and help them with the AIW and those types of things. I've also um, helped teachers get out of their room, so I will sub in their room so they can go observe another teacher, and um, then they fill out a form, a feedback form for that teacher, so they have a copy for their portfolio and a copy for the one that they're ob observing. And then I'll also go in and observe teachers. I'll help during planning time. Um, all of the coaching cycles are based off of the Iowa Core goals, the Common Core, and it's all student-centered. Teachers will focus too on themselves because they want to. They always want to improve themselves. They always don't think they're always thinking that they're never good enough. <laughs> so it's positive praising, um, helping them meet the needs of the students in their classroom. It's just, it's whatever they need, we help to provide. We're advocates for them, basically, as well. That's good. Because sometimes observations can feel like, like yeah. you're our jobs, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And our jobs are non-judgmental. Yeah. We are not evaluative. We are not administration. We are the same level playing field as any teacher in the building. And I always make sure I'm, I put that out there. Right. Non-judgmental, as opposed to the judgmental people to your right. Yep. Um, <laughs> principals, do you have any comments on the program that you would like to talk about? Well, I had it as part of my update, but we can talk about it then too. Okay, sure, that's fine. I guess when uh, County says they're going to do more for the rest of the year, I don't know how they can. Uh, <laughs> you know, they, they are engaged. We're uh, going to do different, maybe. Yeah, that might be yeah, a better way to say it. They are engaged. Or, you know, I, I try and sit down with Callie at least once a week and, and we pencil it in and stuff and it's just that it hardly is able to fit in there because she's so busy uh, but we need to make sure that we're you know we're on the same page and doing things and I would tell you my my building has switched a lot this year because of everything that's going on and, and, and Callie's a huge part of that we've got so many initiatives going on and, and I, I really feel that our kids are starting to own their learning Whereas last year I didn't think that. Um, they, uh, we had kids that have uh, asked to go to teachers' classrooms. We've had a young man that um, wasn't requested to go any place, but wanted to come into the library to continue studying stuff here in lunch hour. Never happened last year at all, and I thought we had a pretty good group last year. You know, so I, I think we're getting things. A large part of that is because. We have people like Callie and, and Christine in our classrooms and stuff working with our teachers making things happen. Um, we've got a brand new science classroom that Callie goes into, technology um, integration, I can't remember the exact name. It's a cool class. Science, Tech, and Society. Science, Tech, and Society. And we've got a lot of kids with a lot of needs in there. And we've got, what, three 
associates and teacher and Callie and and they've made a tremendous strides with those kids in that classroom. I I enjoy going in there and watching it and stuff. So I I think it's just it, it's a neat program. A lot of things going on. Do you think that maybe the more would be more time with the laptops, you know, in the future? I mean, I know we had to roll them out kind of fast, and that might be the place. we yeah. To I think what we're finding is um, like full PD, like early outs and things aren't necessarily what teachers want. They kind of get burned out too fast. They want to look at a tool and they just want to be able to play with it for a while. And they kind of want one on one. Which is why we're moving more to like that tech corner piece where it's 20 to 30 minute, here's a tool, here's kind of how you might use it, here was what it might look like on a student at your head, and then kind of just letting them play as opposed to two to three hours of just learn, 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 and then they never really have time to just stop, explore, and see how you might use it in the classroom. And the other thing I'm finding is that once one person knows, and they're in a grade level, and they're at a team planning session, they're sharing with the other teachers. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of happening naturally and more comfortably. Do they need more time with tech? Absolutely. But I think it's more they need just time to kind of just play. And I think they're just going to naturally progress. It's, in, the course yeah. of, in the course of about a week, once you kind of taught what the new classroom was, in the course of about a week, just about every teacher added me as a co-teacher or student. Um, I was up to like 36 Google Classrooms in the course of about a day and a half. And then I was That's up wonderful. to, at one point I was at like 76 Google Classrooms that I was either in or co-teaching. Because teachers just kind of took it and they ran with it on their own without us really doing much PD on it. Mm -hmm. um, and I had to scale back now because I was a lucky email was coming in. Every time they post something. Alert, I alert. But they're just kind of naturally progressing on their own, which is great. Mm -hmm. And we just try to offer support where we can. I got a question. I, I'm trying to figure out with the one-on-one -on -one, uh, integration, just how much blending is there between classroom instruction and self-instruction with with the, with the technology? In other words, I'm trying to figure that out, and then I'm going to ask you that same question at the end of the year, if there's been a change. I because I suspect that that will change. I think what you'll find right now is the majority of tech is used as kind of like, <coughs> almost like a file cabinet. So like they're using Google Classrooms and things like that to save files or upload assignments or um, push out announcements. Moving from, from a textbook to the computer. That kind of thing. Or a worksheet um, to the computer. As opposed to replacing their teaching. It might open up opportunities. For example, um, one big push we put in the science tech class is virtual labs, giving kids a chance to play with circuit, electrical circuit boards right. without actually trying to figure out how to get the funding to bring in electrical <coughs> circuit boards to play with. Right. Um, so there's some opportunities there, but I don't think it's necessarily replacing the teaching yet. I don't know if we'll get there or not yet in a year. Well, there'll be a blend, I suspect. Mm -hmm. There should yeah. be a blend. I mean, that's what you use technology for is to assist. Well, you're already seeing, you know, already seeing that uh, our kids, especially our EL, ELs, um, have, have the uh, text to speech, so they can listen to it. If it's in the English version, they can have it um, actually, uh, oh, I forgot my mind here, transcribed so it's in Spanish, uh -huh. you know, translated. Translate. Yeah, I can't think of it right away, but yeah, thank you. So they, we can do that with it really quickly. So it's improved that, it's really, that's communication. We can, accessibility. Yeah, yeah, you're right, it's accessibility. Uh -huh. So we've got that in place. I, we also have teachers linking videos um, with the learning for the kids, so they always have access. If they didn't get it the first time, here's Khan Academy, the same, you know, but they've got the exact video that they need dialed in there so they can review it again, so it's accessible to them later on. And so they, they, that way they do a lot of things. I don't think we've green screened, I don't think we've coded, I don't think we've done garage band enough, you know, there's still, I think that comes a little bit, and we, you know, we've got to work our way to that, and I think that's, yeah. you know, I think those are the powerful things, I think we get kids there. You know, I bought a, a huge outdoor and indoor screens at, at Centerville. So all of a sudden, I had these kids want to do animations because they could do them on the screens. You know, I think eventually, because we've got these computers, we'll see things like that and kids will get involved. You know, I just got to convince my superintendent I can get some nice big screens, you know, for the football field. And the, <laughs> but it's powerful stuff. A lot of potential. <laughs> well, we're, we're still, because we're a step back, because yeah. not all of our kids have yes. one one yet, and, and we're still working on it. But what we do have, the kids, it's very user friendly. The iPads and the, and the tablets that we have are very user friendly, so the kids are very used to that technology, even at kindergarten, first grade. Sure. And um, one of our teachers does a program where 
Um, and she's, she's got her phone, and the kids have got these little cards. They're, it's like a, it's like the screenshot ones where you, your ticket comes up, whatever it's got a thing. And they, she gives them a question on the, on the Promethean board, and then they hold up the card, A, B, C, or D, and she actually just scans the room with her phone, and all the answers pop up on the screen to see how many kids got it right, how many kids got the answer. And it's, it's an instant assessment of what they're doing, and the kids love it. I forget what it's called. I think it's called Plicker. Plicker, Plicker. that's right. It's called Plicker. Plicker. I watched her do it. She said, you've got to come watch this. So it's really good. It. And it, it is. It's so you just, each of you hold up a card. It's like a, like a score sheet. You know, it's got all the little things on it. And, he, and she just goes like this. And all of a sudden on the board, you see five A's, three D's, two C's, two D's. And she'll say, oh, somebody didn't answer. You know, I, somebody didn't put the card up. And so they, you know, she goes and clicks it. And so it's literally a 10-second deal. But the kids, it's an instant assessment. And she can do that over and over and over again for different questions. So it's a nice, it's just different. It engages. And what it does is it engages kids. Yeah. Um, they're, just, they're, just, they're just glued to that screen. And I had another teacher did Kahoot the other day, which is a, uh, it's review. a review thing, and she was using vocabulary words, and they had to, the definition was there, and then there were four choices, and the kids then just punch in their on their tablet, you know what the answer is, and then the answers pop right up on the screen. So she says, okay, we we all know, you know, 20 out of 21 got it right, we're good, we know that word, move on to the next one, and then if the next one is 10 and 10, okay, we got a review, we got to go back, and it's an instant that's assessment. That's one great thing about technology. We have Google quizzes. It's one big thing we kind of push which kind of grades the, the kids that take the quiz online, it grades it automatically for yeah. them. And teachers can see right off the bat, oh, question seven, 50% of my kids miss question seven. Gotta go back I to teach, teach almost instantly. As opposed to the old paper pencil way, you spend hours going question Next by question, day. adding up, trying to figure you're out you're least least it. You're maybe 24 to 48 hours behind, right. and on the weekend it's 72 hours behind. Right. Yeah. Right. So so maybe awesome the, and maybe the teacher didn't quite explain it the way he or she meant to, right. and they went, oh, okay, I, maybe I missed this, you know, I skipped a part, or, and then she goes, or he goes right back and teaches it right then, yeah. and then it's over, and then you got it and you move on. So. Yeah, we're so far ahead of our nine-week nine rollout. It's incredible. That's when we're supposed to do this. It's supposed to be next week. The quarter ends tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of that is I mean, yeah, pushing it out so fast and now trying to play catch up massively. I mean, there's a lot of things I know when we talked in the spring from the tech committee that we were going to have done before we tried to push it out. And now we're, we're going to go back and try to do it. And so that's, you know, we're, we're playing catch up at the same time. We're pushing forward. And it's, it's just fun. It spends a lot of our time of our day, but that's fun. Yeah. And they are creative trying to get around the filter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they do, huh? The students. Oh, I understand. I was always one of my concerns. <laughs> How's the tech support keeping up? Because I know with computers it's always like, it won't do this, I can't, it's, the screen's frozen, blah, 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 you know. You have a lot of that? Actually, um, we have a little bit, but, but not, not near much. as much as I had been expecting. I'm very pleased with how things are going and um, the teachers, I'm so amazed at all of them. They're doing a, such a great job with all of this and figuring out little tech things that they mm -hmm. need to fix mm -hmm. uh, before it comes to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've really taken control and charge of their classroom and that to make sure that the kids can do what they need to do. So yeah. Another thing we're doing is providing technology support for our associates so that they can assist the kids. in the school, I ask the kids, how do you like your laptops? We like them. We use them all the time. Yes, we are. <laughs> it's good. It's good. Okay. Um, Dan? Well, first I'll say, ladies, uh, you're you're very welcome to spend the rest of the evening with this meeting, or uh, <laughs> or you can, but please. you can go. But feel free that you don't feel don't feel obligated that you have to stay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. saying they're welcome to stay. It's not like kissing them out. Yeah. Well, a long time ago I said, you can go now and or something to that effect. Yeah. Yourself, they're kicking us out of the <laughs> uh, If you're using the online version, click on the link for the superintendent's report, or if you're in the uh, PDF document, uh, it's page 17. You'll find my report begins on that page. And uh, first thing is the certified enrollment report. I'm disappointed to tell you that our enrollment from last year is down 31 students and compared to three years ago we're down 33 students. Uh, so that's a significant shift 
and uh, uh, we don't really have any anything we can attribute that to uh, because we didn't see a big increase in open enrollment out or a big decline in open enrollment in necessarily. Uh, just there was a, and we didn't see uh, we did see a large graduating class last year and a smaller kindergarten class, but it was a fairly good sized kindergarten class for that matter. Uh, but we had just a little trickle of attrition throughout our system. Is that the first statement, gentlemen? Is, you think I'm describing that right? I would say so. Yeah, we've had more people moving out um, to long, longer distances than we have to open enrollment. Okay. There, yeah, we've they've gone quite a ways. We just, we wanted the high school level, and middle school level. We had a couple that went to surrounding school districts, and they they've gone quite a ways to and moved away. Okay. Moving down to my uh, next page of my report, I'll mention that uh, just last week we had a lockdown in the afternoon. About 1 o'clock we were notified by Wright County Sheriff's Office that uh, there had been a threat against the schools in the county. Uh, more than likely it was directed at perhaps Clarion or, or maybe Eagle Grove, but there was no specificity to indicate uh, which schools, so we decided to lock down all three school systems. We had a successful lockdown and I don't think anybody was alarmed and I think for the most part our public was very supportive of that action. That we were taking the responsible choice of being proactive and, and acting with uh, appropriate caution. Um, we've got our Wright County Board Retreat coming up November 6th. It's going to be in Clarion. Uh, we're going to have uh, some social time starting about 6.30 with our meal at 7.00. And I'll mention that next Wednesday, the Rural School Advocates of Iowa meets down in Ankeny. If anybody has any interest in that, please let me know. I'll be going to that, but nobody else has expressed any interest at this point. <clears throat> and then the very next page, I attended, two weeks ago, I attended a meeting with uh, the leaders of the Prestige Pork Plant in Eagle Grove. And they kind of gave us a timeline about what their expectations and how they think it will affect our local economies, our local populations, our local social services, and so forth. And that, and that report there is on page uh, 19 of my report. And with that, I'll just uh, pause and see if anybody has any questions or anything they'd like to ask about. <coughs> anything else about what I've said or something else that's written in my report? I would like to, again, see maybe um, an enrollment count at the end of the year. Oh, absolutely. Just, we'll do just this just to period. see where we're at. I you know we always get some extras and that type of thing, so it'd be kind of nice to know. Maybe in December or something. In December. Or well, and uh, usually <laughs> I do uh, enrollment projections about February okay. before we start the budget planning process, and we'll definitely give you an update at that time, mm -hmm. too. That's my report. was a nice message from the football official. Wasn't that nice? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you guys care who goes first? Did you fight it out for the principal's report? <laughs> I don't care. Okay, I'll go first then. Okay. Greg got first before. Um, I just want to echo what um, Christine and Connie and, and uh, Callie said. I don't work much with Callie, but, um, but she's in a building and we see her um, but boy, Christine and Connie have just done a, a great amount of work. Um, mostly my job is to have them come to my office, tell me what they like to do, and I say yes. That's pretty much my role because I mean it's just been so easy to work with. Um, we did take, we did spend a lot of time um, really trying to advocate to our teachers that that first hour of the day, uh, we call it Bronco hour, NTS hour. Um, that first hour of the day, we don't plan any activities, we don't do any. Um, meetings, we don't do any, any other special events, uh, we don't do specials. Uh, that first hour is solely based on a uh, half hour or so of reading and interventions and a half hour of math. And that's um, for several reasons. One, because it's good practice for kids. That's the best time of the day for them to learn. That's when they're fresh. Um, and if they're not interrupted and they know every day that they're going to go there, um, because we utilize the special teachers, as Christine mentioned, um, we're able to break down into groups of anywhere from six to ten kids. 
Um, so we've got like 19 staff working with 19 groups, you know, down to, you know, so those kids can get some special instruction um, and really work hard for that first hour of the day. Not that they don't work hard the rest of the day, but it really gets, sets the tone, I think, and um, the teachers worked hard, um, Christine's worked hard, like I said, every morning. Um, it's really nice. I get to go in. I go in and see um, a lot of our English language learners. Um, have uh, they spend a good chunk of that hour on their Imagine Learning program, which is something they have to do by state law. Once they're identified as an English language um, learner, they have to spend time um, on these on our uh, iPads or devices. And um, what's nice is those those computers we, we had in the computer lab. Um, they're functional, um, but they're not really equipped to have 30 or 40 kids on at the same time. Um, they just use up too much. Um, space and the computers are just slower. Using the devices, the iPads or the other um, tablets, um, they can all get on at the same time. They can spend an hour um, working on it, or half hour working on it, and uh, those kids all getting that, um, that extra help. Um, my hope and my goal is that if, if we can help kids who are struggling with the language to be better readers in English, they're going to be better readers and our scores are going to improve. I, I just think those, those just go together. Um, so um, if you ever hear Someone saying, well, I tried to get into school at 8, you know, 8, 10, or 8, 15 to do something, and the principal said no. That's why. So it's because I've said no a lot to those things. Um, we had conferences two weeks ago, three weeks ago now. Um, we had 92% uh, attendance, so was, which is very good. It's a state average or above, um, which is what we like to see. Um, had a lot of good conversations with parents. Um, they're getting to know me, so I, you know, I try to be visible and out and um, greeting kids and greeting parents. Um, we did, as Christine mentioned, we were approved for eight more licenses for our EO learners. Uh, those are free, um, so that, which is nice. We had to qualify. We had to show that we had the need for that. And I think 69, does that sound right? Is that how many kids we had identified this year? Does that sound right? right? <coughs> not sure. Okay. And some are at the high school, so they're not all at the elementary. But um, we did have, um, we had enough kids to identify that we could get some more licenses. And, um, so those were granted. And we're going to have some um, laptops coming, hopefully, that will or not laptops, but iPads to work with them. So uh, we do have some field trips coming up. Um, I kind of made an emphasis year, emphasis this year. We were uh, offered um, money from some of the community members to help with bus transportation and some of the fees, and that was very generous. And my only requirement is that the teachers make sure it's educational related, that the kids learn about what they're going to go to when, before they go, that they talk about what they're going to work on, and then they you know, come report back in some fashion, whether it's visual aids or um, written reports or just some sort of assessment that they do about what they learn. So we have a group going to the Science Center, uh, Des Moines, um, I forget it's next week or the week after another group, um, going to Ryan Gardens, which is the Butterfly Science uh, Garden area down in Ames, or Iowa State uh, in Ames. Um, we talked about Kahoot. Uh, we did help out with homecoming. Uh, I thought it went well. I thought that was a nice week for Except our for the, the weather. Except for the rain <laughs> on homecoming parade. But, um, and, uh, and our fifth and sixth, fourth, fifth, and sixth graders are going to come to the play. Um, they have a matinee, I think, on Thursday. Thursday? Is that right? It's, I can't Thursday remember if it's Thursday or Wednesday. Wednesday or Thursday afternoon, yeah. whatever. But our, yeah. um, they asked, and we, uh, I told the teachers that I thought it would be a great, a great experience for our older students to go, so they're going to go to the musical next week. So, or week after. Week after. Week after. Week yeah. after. Yeah. So, thank you. That's all I got. Thank you, unless you have any questions for me. Welcome to come anytime and visit. All right. Uh, yesterday we had the uh, the Allstate vocal members already. There's also three others with Sarah Blackburn, Elizabeth Nelson, and uh, Caden Seifert will also perform, along with uh, Dylan Bach will be in a trumpet role there. So it's uh, it's Saturday and, and uh, hopefully they they perform at a very high level. Tomorrow we'll actually have a uh, a uh, pep rally for them for a little short pep rally. Um, and uh, we had one on Tuesday for our volleyball state qualifying event today. They got beat by Central Springs, very young team. When you have to start three sophomores and two or three freshmen, two sophomores, you do expect to to uh, play young, and, and we have done that all year. But I think we've improved as the years go along, and uh, I see good things in our future uh, with that group. But they did finish their season on Tuesday. Tonight we. Uh, or today at 2.13, um, our kids formed a tunnel um, in the hallways, and the uh, cross-country teams walked out to the tunnel, to the bus, and got on the bus and went over to Eagle Grove, and I thought they performed very well. Um, I think we probably had quite a few people uh, PR 
Uh, so it was a beautiful night over there. So, um, and I think Keegan did uh, do. I thought she placed in 520, but she did, I thought she ran very well. Um, so I, that was great. Um, we have all state tomorrow. Um, but that I mean, we also have football tomorrow night. But it's probably a big game, um, and hopefully we take care of business and we uh, qualify for the next round. But we'll find out Friday night or Saturday morning. Um, how that's going, but uh, our fall activities are winding up. Uh, junior high football is done now. They finished Tuesday. Girls volleyball finished tonight. Uh, junior high volleyball finished tonight. So we're kind of finishing up that fall season. We're getting into that, like you already mentioned. <coughs> our uh, fine arts activities are coming up with the, the musical here shortly. Um, then we start that fall swing in the uh, winter season. And that means snow is going to fly here pretty soon. <laughs> And then Mr. Fraser is going to earn his money with these uh, school delays and early outs and late starts, all that great stuff, you know, and cancellations. So uh, that's when he really earns his money and his ears get red. Uh, <laughs> um, on Monday, uh, Bark Kazizik and I went to a conference in Cedar Falls at the Taj Mahal, um, also known as the EA267 Cedar Central <laughs> River. I don't know if you've ever been in the old Pie Pack Center <coughs> over yes. in Cedar Falls. That's what it is. Okay. They bought the Pie Pack Center. Okay. It's a seven and a half million dollar building built by Greg Saw, who was the and he is still the director of the Lukash Bruce Field for Iowa, Nebraska, and South Dakota. They was going to make this center in Cedar Falls, and they're going to be the mecca. Well, he's decided he's not going to lose any more money on it, so he sold it to the, <laughs> the EA. So now our flow through dollars pay for this Taj Mahal over there. Um, and that's my criticism of the AEA 2268 over there. So. Besides the fact that it's in Cedar Falls. <laughs> that's right. It's too far. Yeah. It's and, handy. and it's a beautiful building. But it's, uh, I think that money could be spent someplace else. Um, but we went there and had a, a meeting on the four year plans and how, we gonna, how are we going to embed those and how is it going to make um, sense for our kids and how is it going to make a difference in education. So basically, um, this, this process, we had some good conversations. Um, we were working with South Harden Schools a little bit, and, and then we had uh, talked to some of Forest City a little bit because they're also, they're also. And basically, we've come up with some ideas, and I, I think you'll see us put a proposal together here in a little bit. Um, basically, they're saying that we've got to have this four-year plan put in place. And it's got to go home to the parents. The parents have to be engaged with it so they can Make sure that they, they know what their kids are doing, what they're taking, and what path they're on. They have to know um, what classes that, that they are available to them, uh, for secondary, you know, and post-secondary opportunities and stuff. And so, and then we're held accountable to that and making sure that we get this all put in place. And we've kind of got a process already in place a little bit with our, with our uh, power lunches, how we can do that. Because we're, we're putting on these classes, and some of those classes can go directly over into what's required in this four-year plan. But with that, we're going to kind of build that portfolio process with the kids. And we'll, we'll probably do something with trying to get, make it a requirement that the kids have this portfolio in place because it, we're now required and held accountable to it. And then we'll probably bring something to you guys so you can kind of help us support that as we go forward. So expect that shortly. I've got a, we've got an idea. I've got to run it by Mr. Frazier, but I, I think we're going to have something coming forward in that, that way. I think we be very valuable. Uh, Mr. Frazier, I think, is, um, I shouldn't say is, Mr. Frazier, his group, the, the superintendents were working on the RPP, um, which is that regional planning for our um, CTE stuff. So you're going to see that come. We'll have to put together a plan for that here shortly. And you'll have to have that board approved. Um, because it was supposed to be done last spring. <laughs> yeah, so. <coughs> so we'll get that done. Um, so you'll see that in the, in the next couple weeks, probably. At least we'll have the, the initial plan. like to have probably some feedback if we could just individually, like uh, um, what you think, what you don't think, you know, when you see things. Just kind of like to have individual opinions, probably, to help us mold it and put it together a little bit, I think. And we'll, we'll also probably have students look at it a little bit, and also some parents groups a little bit, to try and get some insight on this, because I think it's going to be a larger than than just a Greg and a, and a Barb issue, I think. So if we could have maybe one or two people volunteer to 
look at that a little bit. Maybe the SIAC committee. That's a good idea. I didn't think about that. Good idea. But yeah, so that's going to be coming down the, the pike here a little bit. Um, the, I guess the last thing that uh, I want to mention is again, I think Callie and, and uh, Connie in my world, Christine and his, have done a wonderful job of, uh, and I also tell you my teachers have done a wonderful job. They're, they're I think I've tried to kill them um, with the <laughs> implementation of the computers and, and uh, the power lunch and everything else. And they've done a, one, a remarkable job. And they stepped up and have gone above and beyond trying to get that in place. And, and I think it's made a significant difference in our building. And I think we will continue to do that. Um, I think this year we're a lot farther along, too, because we do have somebody maintaining the attendance and watching the attendance. And we're taking care of that better. Um, so, I, you know, that's Scott's job. And so, so I think things are going better this year. I don't feel like my head's cut off this year as much as I did last year, um, but I think we're I think we're making the improvements and I think we're seeing a difference that way. Um, but it's been it's been good good tough work for our teachers. They've done a remarkable job. And I don't know my last pitch here. She's done the work of two people this year. Really, she's trying to maintain two buildings and taking care of everything. I don't know how she's done it, but I also like to thank her. She's done a wonderful job. That's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we have several action items. The first is the SIAC committee. Um, and are you, what are you looking for from us, Dr. Frazier? Right. Well, the SIAC committee, uh, we need to reactivate this. For one thing, it's uh, by law we're required, required to have a committee. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it needs to be board appointed, and as a board, board appointed committee, it is subject to the open meetings law. But this is the committee is supposed to be represent the rank and file of your constituency out of the community. It's supposed to, by definition in the law, it's supposed to be a balance between the race, the gender, and the national origin, the discipline or part disability, uh, the religions of your community, and it's supposed to represent your community that way. And Finally, this is supposed to be the advisory council for the school board. Now, our administrative team, the six members on, of my leadership team, are working on creating some names, a list of names for people to invite to be part of this committee. But really, this is a, uh, a board-appointed committee, and it is supposed to be an advisory council to this school board. So what I'd like to ask of you board members and you don't need to give me any names tonight necessarily, but I'd like you to uh, think about people in the community that are friends of yours, colleagues of yours, associates, maybe even people you don't like necessarily. I'm not going to be on the appointed committee. Um, and uh, <laughs> and uh, if you don't, uh, maybe you could talk to them, or if you don't feel comfortable talking to them or not able to, uh, let us know, and my office will get in touch with them. And, uh, and I'll let them know that uh, so-and-so so a board member has nominated you to be a part of this committee. Won't you please agree to participate? So I'd like to bring that to the board's, board's attention this evening. And, uh, and like I said, you don't have to respond right now, but if you could think about that, maybe get back to me over the next couple weeks. I don't know if we're going to get this committee convened before the holidays. Uh, we might be convening in January, February of you know, the whole second semester make up for lost time. But uh, we do need to get this going, and I think it will play a valuable role in moving this district forward in the future. So if I'm understanding you correct, you mm. would like us to bring names to you, and yes. you're not really seeking volunteers? I would, well, I would appreciate it if you would seek volunteers. Uh, I mean, is there a, a way that we could seek volunteers, like a letter in the paper or on the school website? Well, or? I will be doing that, yes. Okay. We'll, I'll be making some contacts, but if you, if you know people, okay. people you know that are out there in the community that you think would be good to this, good for this, why then by all means, uh, drop a word to them and see if they'd have an interest. Then let me know their names. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. All right, so that's really all you want. That's all I want tonight. Okay. I will bring this back probably next couple of months as we continue to build the list. Sure. And maybe in December we'll have a, uh, uh, a pool to, for the board to vote on. Okay. 
Um, item B is resolution on the use of a consent agenda, which we discussed at our workshop last week, but do you want to, in a nutshell, just explain it to the public right. before the, we vote on it? The consent agenda is not a means of uh, hiding agenda items <coughs> or eliminating discussion on agenda items. A consent agenda is to expedite the meeting process by uh, having a single motion for all those things that are routine action. For example, on tonight's agenda, uh, there are going to be, there's going to be a vote on personnel items. There's also going to be an, a vote on uh, students' tuition into and out of the district. Well, the board cannot vote really no on the tuition agreements. So it makes sense to lump all these things, minutes, financial statements, bills, uh, tuition agreements, all those things into a single action item and so you vote this on this all at one block and then we can spend more time on the most important functions that have to do with uh, student learning. And like I said, uh, according to this uh, consent uh, resolution, why then we would put this immediately after the approving and amending the agenda. So if any time any board member would like to say, you know, we've got this thing that's in the consent agenda, and I'd really like to talk about this more. Why then you just say that, and we move that right out of the consent agenda, and we make sure it's a discussion item on the, on the agenda. And occasionally there is a conflict in a bill or something that you need to pull the bills out so that they can be voted on separately. True. And that's also another possibility. That is absolutely right. And this board book is available now to people to look at in advance so they could contact us if they had. Absolutely, true. Which is great. I think this is long overdue. Okay, um, so I need a motion to approve the use of the consent agenda. A motion to approve. Okay, Mark has moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. We've got a motion and a second to use the consent <coughs> agenda. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say yes. 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 I think the resolution calls for a roll call vote. Oh, does it? Okay. Pardon me. Okay. Jackie Burt? Yes. Gary Burton? Yes. Mark Shippey? Yes. Uh, Sharon Bartolo? Teresa Mosman? Rick McDaniel? Yes. Jane Turner? Yes. Okay. This resolution has passed, and starting at the next regular board meeting, then we will have the consent agenda. True. Okay. All right. Um, item C is the employment resolution for personnel, um, personnel resignations and recommendations. Yes, and you'll notice Teresa, Teresa Greenfield, a nominee for the new business manager. Uh, she's come in three days this week anticipating her appointment. And uh, she will start officially, she's scheduled to start officially Thursday of next week. And then, she, but she swapped out three days this week with the exchange that she would go back three days in November and help train her successor at a current job. Mm -hmm. That's honorable. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then the other one I'd like to introduce you to is I've asked for a uh, approval of a temporary employee and that is Thelma Martinez. The Martinez sisters are sitting at the table there to your left, board, school board. They're, they're not related, by the way. <laughs> they, they are going to discuss it if they, there is some relation to their, uh, to their uh, spouses. Because uh, there's a possible connection in, in Mexico. In it could Mexico. be, but I don't think they're related. Probably <laughs> not. But Anyway, uh, Thelma has agreed to cover for Josie while Josie is uh, out on maternity. to approve Terry Curtis and Chris Nelson? Correct. Okay. So we have also Terry Curtis as a paraprofessional at the high school and Chris Nelson as a wrestling cheerleading co-coach. Do we have a motion to approve those four personnel employment issues? Five. Five. Sorry. Just thumb. two thumbs. Yep. Yeah, two. <laughs> That's where I got confused. Yep. That's understandable. <laughs> I'll make that motion. Jane? Is there a second? Second. Gary? 
you need to go? Yeah. All right. Um, any discussion? Uh, one thing. Yes. Um, one that talks about the contract for Ms. Greenfield. Mm -hmm. It says the two weeks of vacation accumulated monthly. That's two weeks of vacation accumulated per year. That's accumulated monthly, correct? Right. So it'd be like uh, 0.8 days every month. Right? It just looked funny the way it was worded because it looks like she gets two weeks every month. No. What it means that would be a good deal. I think what it means is I, I she doesn't get her two weeks right off the bat. Yeah. 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 Actually, the contract yeah. won't actually look like that. But. <laughs> yeah. Right. Actually, I think that is how the contract looks. Really? Yeah, I think that's how we've worded it in the past. That's how I think I got that language. Okay. Hmm. As long as we all understand what it means. Any other discussion? We've got all winter sports, Greg. We've got those covered. We, We've already done we, that. Well, I can't remember. We, we, had know we, did some, but. we had a discussion yesterday about how we're going to handle our junior high sports. And that's going to, um, oh, okay. we're going to meet with the association and get that worked out. We'll continue to operate that way that we are, which created an opening. We still have a girls. Um, basketball assistant coach because Dave just wants to be a volunteer because he can't always get off from the plant. So we'll have to find a, a true assistant for, for Andrew. Mm -hmm. And then we still have not yet approved the assistant high school wrestling position yet. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to set up and, and meet with an individual on that yet. And then I'll bring that back to you in November. I couldn't remember who it approved. <laughs> I know it approved yeah. some. It's been so long. Yeah. But the rest of them should be hired in place. Then we have uh, girls track and <coughs> girls softball head to fill. Okay. All right. Well, all in favor of employing Teresa, Thelma, Thelma, Terry, and Chris, please say yes. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Now we have contracts for students tuitioned into and out of the district. And this is a routine task that the board performs every year is because we because special education is completely confidential, all we can say is we have a student attending in Ames. Okay. Uh, so we need a motion to approve these contracts. I'll make a motion to approve the okay, contract. Right. And a second. I'll a second. Mark. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of approving the contracts for students' tuition into and out of the district, please say yes. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. <clears throat> the contract for the digital board agendas. Certainly, we're well. You're halfway through the meeting, yeah. and you, you're having a chance to practice with the uh, a test of our uh, digital board packet system. And uh, just ask what you think. Is this is this a worthy investment? Yes, I like it. I, you, we're only seeing one part of it here for us being able to use it here. I agree with the whole the public being able to see it, the transparency of that. And the fact it'll get out timely enough that the public can't, it, it's up to them whether or not they read it. We're putting it in their hands to take care of it, and, and that's that's wonderful. I mean, you, they can take advantage of that, and they can contact us or, or make a decision to come to the meeting if they have something they want to discuss. And that's kind of invaluable for what we want to do. Or even more importantly, to call and find out about it in advance. If yes. They, rather than coming to the meeting, if they're a little intimidated by that, mm -hmm. call yeah. Call and find out what they Definitely. need to know. Yeah. Do you guys have it back there? Is it working mm -hmm. for you? Yeah. And, and honestly, I mean, yeah. the one to one we rolled out to the students, you know, to, to start using the computers and stuff. We, like we said, we have to be, you know, we have to do what we're telling what we want them to do. And this is our start of being able to do that. So I, I don't see we have a way to say no to it. I love it. I, Remember the days, Ruth, when we had to beg for the copy of the board? Well, I just had it. I just had. I was looking for something else, and I happened on it on the school website, and I wasn't aware of it. And 
That's it. I in 35 years, this is the first time that I've ever known what was in the secret packet. I thought, <laughs> yes. I thought they were, no. that that was always kind no, of secret. No, not even kidding. I no. mean, the BKEA had to basically well, for, for get the on their knees to yeah. beg for this. For the, <laughs> for the newspaper and stuff, it's got to help you a lot, too. Well, you know, when the superintendent liked us, we always got a pack. We got mad at <laughs> We knew when they were mad because we never get a pack. But I mean, you're going to get it more in advance yes. now, too, so it will help you, you know, figure that out for the paper and stuff. So, yeah. I mean, you see the other thing all the way around. Absolutely. <laughs> So, do we need to approve this contract? I would Please. ask you. So, company. only board can approve a contract. <laughs> yes. What is the actual com board book? Is that what it's that's called? The, that's the company. Okay. All right. So, we need a motion to approve the contract with the board book for $2,000 <coughs> annually to provide for the paperless school board meetings. Motion to approve. Is that you, Gary? For my Mar Mar Okay. <laughs> he sounds just like. Well, I keep going in that direction. I wasn't looking. I'll <laughs> second. And Jane will second. All right. And is there any other discussion? The only other discussion I have is $2,000 annually for something like this. I think we're getting a pretty good deal on it. That really is a good deal for what it's going to give us. Think of the paper savings. Yes. Unbelievable. Right. I used to have, <clears throat> uh, yeah, at the end of the year, back in the day, I bet I would have eight inches of paper for each board member, times seven, just because we had to put it in paper. And this will be your archive as well. So anytime you get six months from now and you think about what we did in November, you go back and go back to that meeting on that same website and it's all there. Yeah. Okay. Any other discussion? If not, um, all in favor of the contract with board book for $2,000 for the paperless school board meetings? Please say yes. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Right. And now we're at the school board policies uh, where we revised our purchasing and bidding process. We talked about revising purchasing and bidding, raising those limits uh, for and uh, so what we, I think what we discussed was the idea that uh, uh, the superintendent would be able to make uh, purchases up to $25,000 provided that there was still a competitive bid process, and we were following that. Is that what we agreed on? Yeah, this is what I understand. That's exactly right. Okay, so I just struck those four words mm -hmm. prior to board approval. Right, right. Okay. All right. Um, is there a motion to accept that? Or do we need to just no, this reading. is first reading. So we don't. Yep, never mind. Can we, um, we need to we approve the first reading, right? We, we, need, we need to, to approve yeah. it, and then we can ask to waive. Yeah, we can if we want to try it. Okay. okay, all right. So we need to have a motion to approve the first reading. I'll move to approve the first reading. I'll second. Gary. All right. Any other discussion? All in favor, say yes. 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 I would move that we uh, wait the second and third readings and uh, adopt in final form. I will second that move. Okay. I don't think the other two members that are here would care. Do you? They no, because we, we discussed that. that I mean, we honestly, I would really hate for something to happen between, I mean, yeah. if we don't do this, we have two more meetings before this is finalized. Right. Sure. And if something would blow up, God forbid, something blows like up one of the buildings, it's over. Up, yeah. yeah. And then we'd have to call a special meeting just to come in and, and take care right. of it. I don't think we should have to do that. I don't think we should put our administration in that position to have to do that. So okay. I just wanted them to know we yeah. thought of them. <laughs> Good. Yeah, and, and that is okay. Yeah, yeah. Sure it's okay. Yeah, it's, well, I'm, I'm sure it's too obvious we had all discussed it. And we did. Yeah, we decided did. It we was. did. And, so and honestly, sure with will. this transparency with this um, board book, it'll be easier for the public if they have anything that they want to say, they should be able to say it on the first reading. Mm -hmm. right. And it might not always be that we want to no, waive No, no, absolutely, absolutely not. Right. I agree with you. Yeah. That's true. All but right, so there's a motion on the floor right now to waive the second and third readings of uh, policy 705.1. Uh, is there any other further discussion on that? If not, I'll... Um, 
All in favor say yes. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carried. Okay, similarly, policy 802.2, uh, we're talking about uh, giving the superintendent and the superintendent's team uh, the authority to make repairs up to $25,000, which is allowed by law. All right, so we have the first reading of the revised policy 802.2, requests for improvements. Is there a motion on this? A motion to approve. Mark has moved. Is there a second? Yes. Gary. Discussion <coughs> on this? Same, bas same basic yeah. principle involved okay. here yep. as was involved in the previous uh, resolution. All right, so all in favor of the revised policy 802.2 being um, revised up to $25,000 from $5,000, please say yes. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Likewise, I'll make a motion that we waive second and third reading and approve in final form. Okay, I'll second. Motion by Gary, second by Jane to waive the second and third readings of this policy. Any discussion? Just, uh, it wouldn't make any sense to not do it with this one. We did exactly. the first one. So. All, right. All right. All in favor say yes. 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 Opposed, no. Okay, motion carries. School board attorney, um, you have some <coughs> suggestions for us on basically hiring the Ellers and the Well, you know, um, I've worked with uh, Mr. Bracken in the past, and I think he's a fine attorney, um, and we would be well represented by him, but there are a lot of fine attorneys out there. Uh, it, I think it really depends on the school board who you feel comfortable with. If you feel comfortable with Mr. Bracken and wish to continue with him, or if you'd like to make a change, there are other possibilities out there. I have a couple of recommendations for you. Uh, Ms. Uh, Reif, Rebecca Reif, I've used, she's currently working with us on our uh, civil rights investigation regarding this web access, uh, web page access, and uh, um, she's uh, a little young. I guess my question for you is, are we hiring the firm, or are we hiring a specific attorney, or how does that work exactly? And that's just it. You really can just say, we want to use this firm, and we could we can select from within. And actually, when you, uh, like when we contacted, when I contacted Mr. Bracken about our website, uh, he, he said he delegated this to Ms. Reif, because that's her specialty. I think that they have great bond counsel. There's lots of reasons to, you know, honestly, they're, they're just a whole plethora of specialties that are offered by the firm. Um, you can go with Rick. I know Rick Angle. Um, he's been here in this school mm -hmm. and talked with us before. Um, he's he's a fine attorney. Um, don't know. I don't know Danielle Jess Hanif, uh, Hainfeld Field Hainfield. Um, obviously, her. Her, her family is well known. Mm -hmm. Dr. Jess was a great uh, superintendent over mm -hmm. at Cal. Um, I, I I really like the idea of just going with the Ellers Law Firm. And right now, our for example, our audit just lists Ellers and Cooney as our attorneys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that gives us some flexibility, like you said. If yep. There are people with expertise in certain areas. Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, okay, so I need a motion this topic. I'll make the motion to approve Allers and Cooney law firm. Okay. Jane? I'll second. Mark? Any further discussion? If not, <coughs> then all in favor of hiring Allers and Cooney as our school legal counsel, please say yes. 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 Opposed? I just have one question, and you were a school's attorney also. Is that, I, or what, I didn't know how that was listed. Let me, let me explain. I do yes. not know if I was ever actually named as school oh, attorney, but okay. what happens is on a lot of local issues, uh -huh. people
people would come to me and I would uh, I would offer my advice and counsel and I would I do see. legal work on real estate. That's kind of a, an area where local counsel are probably more suited to some of uh -huh. us. Um, so, you know. So we employed you at times. You actually hired me at times to, at do, times certain to do certain things. And uh, I obviously I wouldn't be available now. But right. I other didn't lawyers know how the contract could was. Or, yeah, I didn't know. So. Okay. So that's needed. just kind of a, as needed. As needed basis. Okay. Yeah. okay. Thank you. Okay. Clarifying that. All righty. Moving on. Dr. Frazier is asking to uh, the board to approve his attendance at the National Conference on Education in Nashville in February. Nashville. You should go with. Good. Man, isn't there fun stuff to do? Oh, it's great. Time. Nashville. <laughs> There's a lot of fun stuff and a lot of great food in that. It community. is my favorite place to great go. Great music. Is it really? Oh, it is. Oh my. It's one. It's one. Only, it's in my top five. only if you buy cowboy boots and line pants at the <laughs> Wild, Wild Horse. Horse. I have. I have done that. I don't. My wife has never allowed me to buy cowboy boots. <laughs> Usually they have like a two for one special. They don't have to be the same size. So you know, I buy both <laughs> By the way, I'm spending the weekend in Austin, which is the Nashville and Southwest. There you go. Yes. South by Southwest. Okay. Um, anyway, you're going to be, are you presenting? Or are you? I do not have a presentation of this. But you this have time. in the past. I have yeah. in the past. Okay. Yes. All right. I'll make a motion to approve Jane. his attendance at the conference. Thank you. Is there a second? <laughs> yes. No. Sure. <clears throat> Any further discussion? All in favor of Dr. Frazier attending the National Conference on Education February 14th through 17th, 2018 in Nashville, please say yes. 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 Valentine's Day. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Valentine's Day in Nashville. Yes, and my wife will insist upon traveling back from Austin just so she can go with me to oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> you Better take her out. I mean, if, if I was going to the black hole of Calcutta, she'd want to come with Absolutely. me. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, financial audit. All right. You have at your uh, at your place this audit. Uh, it's, it's in a red binder, but I'm going to take you through the highlights that I have in the in my packet. Uh, for those in the public, I'm sorry I don't have extras of this at this time. I, I also do not have a digital copy. I am going to inquire of our auditor if they will send us a digital copy. And it'll be my intent to get that posted properly on the website so it'll be accessible to our public. But uh, uh, the audit was, um, by the way, the audit was uh, is required to be submitted to the state by March 31st of each year. As our audit was not performed until May, I'm, I'm assuming we might not have hit that data <laughs> quite on. <laughs> oh. yeah, not you. The district did not. Right. But... Uh, let me take you through, if you would, please, uh, let me take you through my packet, uh, my review, my advice on the di district audit. And that is, uh, the first thing is our financial summary. Right now, it suggests that we have a cash balance of a, just shy of a of, uh, million dollars. Um, now, uh, with that, that is a really good, healthy balance. I wouldn't want to see it fall too much farther below that, but neither would I want to see it grown a great deal because uh, what IASB advises school boards against having a fat cash balance because it's people's tax dollars. Absolutely. Um, We're not a bank. Now, in, um, and to clarify uh, for the lay people what a solvency ratio is, uh, your financial advisor tells you to put away three months' salary for a rainy day. Well, three months is one-fourth of the year, or 25% of the year, so that is, in effect, a 25% solvency ratio. And uh, and that is the standard for business and industry, is about a 25% solvency ratio. But you would, but the school board association recommends against that kind of solvency ratio because you're sitting on people's tax dollars. They are unnecessary because, unlike business and industry that has sees uh, winters and summers of their finances, we tend to get about the same money every year. So we don't necessarily weather the seasons like uh, private industry does. 
Now we have now one of the concerns that the auditor has was a significant decrease in our uh, cash position from the previous year. Uh, we were at um, <coughs> uh, very last line on that page. We were at nearly two million dollars at the end of 2015 to drop to just uh, just over a million dollars at the end of 2016. So that was a significant decrease. Now I will mention that. Uh, we've discovered that we do owe additional money to the Iowa uh, Public Employee Relations System, uh, re Retirement pardon. System, pardon me. And uh, so there's another $200,000 that actually comes off of that balance. We should consider that when we're taking a look there. But that's, uh, that's our cash position. That's the cash on hand. Any questions on that before I move on? Okay, then um, after reporting on our connect cash for our different systems, uh, I'd like to take you through what their analysis is of how we were doing business as a business office. And the first one they cited us for was segregation of duties, but I'd like to encourage board members not to be concerned with that gig, because they're going to cite us for that every darn year. They always have and they always will. And I once asked an auditor, how many employees do we need to take that off our audit? And they said, well, you probably need at least six in your business office. And we just are not, never going to have six employees working in the business office. Um, even though there might be people in our business office that would like to see that. <laughs> uh, letter B talked about how they really recommended that we get some additional training to our people in the business office. Uh, right now, uh, they don't like, they don't think we're doing an adequate job of tracking our capital assets. We should have a fixed dollar amount of what's a supply and what's equipment. And equipment is a permanent thing that stays and we should have some kind of an asset tag on everything that's permanent equipment from copy machines to computers to whatever is above that, whatever dollar figure is, uh, is identified. We used to do that. We used to have that. We may have. But they said little they're, barcodes on yeah. like the keyboards. And we worked on that. We worked Everywhere. in that long. Greg, time. can you answer? Yeah. Have we been doing that lately? No. Teresa, have we been doing that lately? She she barcodes it. I I, know. I barcodes all. I barcode all technology. All the yeah. technology. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but the desk yeah. and stuff like that come in. Yeah. So we're so we're spotty. Yes. Yeah, it used to be all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you could do an inventory of everything that the school district don't. Absolutely. Absolutely everything. Right. Mm -hmm. And so obviously we do have barcodes on our technology, and we, we're still, still doing it in places, but the uh, auditor would like to see us improve our process. And it is a time-consuming process, especially if we're going to get caught up on some things. And who does that? Uh, we basically fall to our business office and our secretaries for the most part in their different buildings as items are bought by a building, why mm -hmm. then they're... Uh, why then, like maybe it came into a, the office of the elementary, the, uh, the elementary staff would tag something. And then we, we I don't know, do we have the equipment that, uh, the little gun that beeps on the barcodes, or is that how we record them? Yeah, actually we do. We did have a system um, about three years ago, and a lot of our items are, are tagged, and yeah. we do have some hard copy for each room, but it was never updated. Okay. We weren't. So we just haven't been updating in recent years. Right. Okay, good. So we won't have to go too far back to get caught no. up. Good. Uh, apparently, we're not keeping consistent books with our flexible spending in TSA accounts. That they're, we're using a different uh, accounting system for that, and we need. Or keep in mind. Let me clarify. This this is the audited report for fiscal year 2016, the year ending June 30th, 2016. So obviously. We're talking a year and a half old at this point. So uh, keep in mind that uh, there may have been some changes that won't show up on the next audit, and our next audit is not uh, is likely to be performed sometime in November or December. Uh, uh, letter E, we had some uh, issues where we were uh, where we have some specific grants and specific funds and. This happens from time to time. You find you suddenly you've got a huge balance, and you taking you track move some expenses into that account. Uh, everybody does that, 
and it is legal. There's nothing illegal about it. But the best way to do it is to be very careful and try to make sure your accounts are coded to those grants right from the outset. And if you run a deficit, it clearly shows the deficit. Uh, letter F, they cited us, and this was something we need to have a policy on negative lunch account balances, and the board approved that policy earlier this fall. Um, in 2016, we exceeded a portion of our certified budget. That was uh, something we should not do. Now that happens from time to time with just about any district. It can be a case of sometimes those accounts clear very late and it's all of a sudden it's June and all of a sudden you've, you've exceeded a category and your auditor said, hey, you're not supposed to do that and you sometimes get gigged on that. But uh, if it looks like you're going to exceed any of those categories in your certified budget, you're just supposed to recertify before that happens. Right. It's really a very simple process. Get it done before the end of June. Right. <coughs> they wanted to note that uh, as of the end of fiscal year 2016, our sales tax fund has 2.3 million in reserve. Um, that uh, some of our activity funds, we've been running into deficit and uh, auditors don't like to see that. In, in practicality, uh, there are some funds that make the money and some funds are just a drain. I mean, the chess club just, there's not a lot of admissions the chess club brings in, okay? The football team, their revenues tends to pay for the chess club. Yeah. So, but, but we have to be very conscientious about making sure those funds are moved over to cover this so we don't get those deficits. And then there's a comment about target donations. But most importantly in bold, it said in regard to issues of instances of non-compliance, it says no matters were noted. So. Uh, so we've got some things to work on, but uh, it's not like there's any findings of any really significant errors or fraud or anything like that taking place in our district. So any quick questions or comments on anything? There was one item, and I just happened to catch it today. You bet. Mention of a principal financial stock. Um, I did work for the district at one point. Uh, where the state auditor's office got really excited about us holding stock in commercial companies, saying that we can't do that, that we're not allowed to have anything except Fed funds, CDs, and regular bank accounts. Right. We can't have investments in stock companies. Correct. And s for some reason, we ended up with some principal financial stock that we were holding. It was in the audit report. Maybe we don't anymore, but I just thought oh, thank you. we need to be addressing that. Was that know. when we started the scholarship fund? No. That was different. Scholars, no, in right? fact, I was the one that kept dealing with the state auditor on that for the scholarship fund, and they finally said, we're going to leave you alone. Okay. Because those were stocks that were given to us, and Correct. we kept them. We did not convert right. them. We didn't cash them out and buy something else. Right. We got stock from donors, and we right. kept that same stock holding and still have it to this very day. Mm -hmm. because it generates more income than we can get off of Fed sure. funds or treasuries or, or, or CDs. And so that's why we keep those stocks. But, but this is something But this is different. the district had some principal financial stock, and I thought, um, I don't think we, you can have that. No, we can't. As a matter of fact, there was uh, districts, there used to be a little looser rules on that. And yeah. there was one district that, was, that I know of, I can't think where it was, they were particularly aggressive in their investments. And they were a growing district. They were always passing bond issues and building buildings. Yeah. And because their business manager did a really good job of investing, they were able to build one building for free. Yeah, I'm sure. And ah. the public thought that was just wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Until the market went the yeah. other direction yeah. and they couldn't build the building they paid for. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's on That's when the rules changed. It's on page 63, uh, ID 16. I, just something for somebody in the business office to say, do we still have that stock? And so we need to address that. Gotcha. And, I, and this audit firm did not mention it, but I know the state auditor's office was really excited about us holding shares of stock in commercial companies. Anyway. So we should probably look into that. Somebody yeah, ought to just look it up and see if we still have that stock. And if so, we need to liquidate it and turn it into cash.
because now is a really good time. Yes. Right? <laughs> you know. Right. <laughs> Stock to up. I doubt the lettuce bar puts on it. <laughs> no, probably <laughs> not. All right, so do you want a motion to accept? I'd ask the board to approve this this uh, audit report. Okay. Would anyone like to make that motion? I'll move to. Okay, Jane. Is there a second? I'll second. Mark. Any further discussion on the auditor's report? Hearing none, all in favor of accepting the fiscal year 2016 school district audit, please say yes. 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 Opposed? No. Motion carried. And that is the end of the action items for tonight. Now we have some discussion items on hiring an auditor for fiscal year 2018. Well, you had a three-year contract with Nolte, Kornman, and Johnson. This, they'll be coming in in November or December to do our audit, and that fulfills their contract. So, uh, so we'll need to shop for an auditor for next year, for fiscal year 19, and, and thereafter. Uh, obviously, we could, the board has the authority to extend the contract with Nolte, Kornman, and Johnson. Uh, we can send out bids uh, or requests for proposals from companies, so we do competitive bidding. However, li it's likely the cost of the audit is going to be under the $25,000, which means it's not required that we have competitive bids. And the thing about doing competitive bids is it's incumbent upon a board, generally, to accept the low bid. And, uh, but the question is, uh, Nolte, Cornman and Johnsman has been known to be a low bidder. Do you like, uh, the question is, do you like the work they do or would you consider going with somebody else? And I'd like to suggest uh, maybe it's time to try somebody different, just see how, how our results look. Uh, I've got one company I've worked with in the past, Williams and Company out of Spencer. They're very thorough and it won't be me telling you what's in the audit where you'll have to say, you know, is Fraser being square with us on all this stuff? Uh, because the auditor will sit there on the end of the table with you and she'll take you through and tell you exactly what you want to know and be able to ask, answer any of your questions. That's one of the services they offer is, uh, is uh, thorough disclosure to the board about exactly what they've learned in the audit. <clears throat> um, Another one to consider is rent Is there out there out of Fort Dodge? Uh, no, I think they're out of uh, Albert Lee, Minnesota. Albert Lee, really? Yeah. Okay. They're out of Mason City. And Mason City, yes, the right mark. Okay. And there is a company out of Eagle Grove uses a company out of Fort Dodge. Okay. Uh, I haven't heard necessarily how they've done, other than uh, the superintendent over there thinks they hate him because <laughs> he, he tells him he tells him he can't do. He tells the, they tell him he can't do certain things that he wants to do. Yeah, see, there's a lot of CPA firms out there, but not all of them will do public audits. Right. And that's, what, that's, that's the challenge, is finding somebody that's good, doesn't charge you an arm and a leg, but still tells you what you need to know right. going forward. In year. a timely fashion. Yeah, in a timely fashion. Because this seems like pretty delayed. Mm -hmm. Well, I do know Renner and Bertram does the city audit in Belmont also, mm -hmm. and um, they're on my case. Um, for June 30th, as of the 1st of September, they said, you tell me, as city attorney, if you have any financial issues that you need to disclose to the, to the public. So, uh, they're, 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 they're very timely, but I'm not saying that in the past, I don't know that. So, um, what I'm hearing then is couple. that we would like to have Dr. Frazier bring us a couple different options next month. Good plan. Mm -hmm. okay. Happy to. Okay. So the one out of Mason City slash Albert Lee, and the one out of Spencer, and the one out of Fort Dodge. Sure, I could do that. And then we I'll contact them and see if they have an interest. I mean, uh, well, yeah, true. they may yeah. not. Yeah, right. they're, uh, <clears throat> I just had a meeting on uh, yesterday with uh, some superintendents, and uh, I can't remember the school, but one of the superintendents was having trouble. He couldn't find somebody to do his audit. Wow. Um, 
He said, who, who do you have you can suggest to me? Because I can't get anybody to offer to do our audit. <clears throat> so, because sometimes the company says, you know, our client list is full, we can't squeeze anybody else in. Uh, student representative to the school board. I'm assuming this is a non-voting member that would come. It would be a non-voting member, yes. Uh, like bring the student's perspective to the board? Well, uh, the board asked to put this on the agenda today, yeah. and uh, and we and I didn't put up an action sheet for it because the board had indicated they wanted to talk about it. So, um, uh, Is that something that Greg... A student council, council member, like the student council I, president, or somebody like that. I, I would think somebody like that would be appropriate. Mm -hmm. That's the lines could, I was thinking along too. Yeah, or they could select maybe the executive, <coughs> executive committee of the student council could select, could select somebody. A yeah. representative maybe maybe the somebody. president's too busy to come to these meetings on a Thursday night. Or I don't shy. Know. Or shy. <laughs> but he she or was she, she was doing the meals down at the well there you back go. shield tonight so. <laughs> Maybe could get a couple just in case one couldn't come, you know, they could yeah. alternate or something. Right. something like that. <laughs> or they could maybe sign up to come, like, once, you know, like, that's what we used to do in BKEA. Everybody took their turn coming to a meeting and reporting back out um, if they don't want to have one person do it. We could do that. I, I think that's a good idea because it does give some flexibility, yeah. but still gives them a representative there. You know, sure. the time you see something with familiarity with people on the yeah. board. <coughs> yes, I think is yeah. make a connection. So maybe like two or three of them might be appropriate then. Mm -hmm. Well, you could pose it. Would you be willing to pose it to the yes, to the council to see yes. if they have an interest? Yeah, I think it's a fantastic idea. So, okay. yeah. Thank you. Um, handicap accessibility for the athletic field spectators. Like we've been talking about this for a long time. We have. Um. <laughs> and uh, I'd like to suggest, I think what I hear, tell me board, is this what you hear that uh, the, the single biggest issue, there are several issues, but the single biggest issue is just uh, the surface out there, you'd like to see something paved so wheelchairs can get up and down it, and you're people about aren't tripping on the gravel, on the football about field and baseball, yes, softball. I think all of the above. Yes. Yeah. Probably that's probably the biggest issues Kevin. having access to. I already sent an email about it. Okay. But, yeah. So but that, that's what your yeah. thought is right now. That and the uh, the handicap parking at the football field, we have more spaces, mm -hmm. but the spaces are right in front of the board the ambulance sits. Mm -hmm. So people that can't get out of their cars or don't want to because of weather and stuff, they can't see. The football games because the ambulance is parked right there. Oh. Did we talk about we're what happened on the north, north end? The north I'm, yes. I'm going to move it to the north end. Okay. Yeah. All right. There you go. We 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 got a solution. Yeah. I was going to say that's a pretty yeah. easy fix. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And I don't think we have any at the softball or baseball. Do we? No. Do we have any? Handicap no, we parking don't. Even? No, we don't. No. But our parking is it's, it's bad it's, there. It is just gravel. It's yeah. kind of bad. <laughs> and there's some big rocks. The yeah. big rocks are bad. Yeah, yeah they are. They're hard. It's easy to fall. Especially if we could park kids. in the back, it would be nice. I'll feel. Yeah. Little kids start throwing them at you. You're okay. Uh, you know, if we could park out in the outfield, maybe we could save <laughs> some of those they... for handicap <laughs> yeah. in the front or something. Yeah. I don't know. Well, yeah. I mean, in the old days, yeah. you know, that is where people park. I'm sure you're both of your cahoots on that one. You like that. I'll be on the cahoots, too. Yeah, I knew you would be. Yeah. Well, how would the board feel? We have an architect that we're currently have under employ for not a lot of money. Um, <laughs> I, I, like, I like that kind of money. Zero, 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 right. yeah. zero uh, money. <laughs> he wouldn't do this for the same fee structure, yeah. but how about just saying, uh, Mr. Weininger, uh, would you please draw up the specs for the board to approve so we can go out for competitive bids uh, bring have those specs ready for us in December so we can go out for competitive bids January, February, be ahead of the bidding process. We can get our best prices if we have our RFP proposals in January, February, because right. people will be competing for that work when later on if they get to June, they've already got their summer book and they say, right. I'll highball that and if I get it, why then great, I'll get it done, but I'll make a lot of money on it too. But uh, the most competitive bids are in January, February time frame. How would you feel about me just contacting him and bringing this, seeing if he's willing to handle this and bringing this back to the November meeting. Love it. Good. 
good plan. Mm -hmm. Is this just for the handicap accessibility, or are there other improvements that we're looking at? Well, I'm talking about just this uh, this hard surface, this covering up the gravel and getting a hard surface in there in those three facilities. And I think uh, Mr. Weininger is talking about we really ought to look at bleachers for wheelchairs, and uh, yeah. and and but that could be something that we may. We need to be, we can't put it way down the road, but uh, it doesn't necessarily have the immediacy of this other concern that's struck around for a while. And that doesn't need an engineer either, necessarily, to tell us where to put it and how to do it. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's a, it's a bleacher mm -hmm. that you buy, commercial, I think. Right. And you put it on the diamond or on the field. Well, we did talk about putting a ramp, too, on our existing bleachers on the side the, the and coming up. Some help. The ramp, yeah. Yeah. We talked about that, but that we haven't done anything. And then we don't have anything over in the other fields, softball or baseball, for a wheelchair to sit. Once yeah. you do that. So that's... Once you start. Once you start. Yeah, and I, know. I mean, when, when you're making that improvement, is there something else that's going to mess up? You know, or mm -hmm. is, is there something right. else where, let's just say the track is getting, I mean, in two years the track needs replaced or mm -hmm. upgraded. And do we want it to be an eight-lane track instead of a six-lane track? Exactly. Yeah. And that will really mess it up. Correct. So, you know, if we had a few ideas, I don't want them to go into a lot of detail here, but if we had, okay, this is a simple handicap accessible approach, this is getting a little more elaborate, right. and, and then going with that, because maybe we could, we could uh, kill three birds with one stone, so to say. Well, we need a press box too. Or have a long fields. range. We do. You know, like, and then we're we, going to do this. We can put the hair wheelchair in the next phase. This is yeah, kind of well, like how we built the whole. And there are some very specific rules for, regarding the Americans with Disabilities Act, too, right. that right. suggest that you can't just create a new bleachers just for wheelchair people and say, okay, that's. That's your bleachers over there, and they yeah. sit there. everybody exactly. else gets to sit here. Right. They're supposed it's supposed to be integrated, but the question is, uh, to what extent can you just add on no. versus taking down and remodifying the entire sure. bleachers? And that's something we'll need our the expertise for our architect to know how to work with right. ADA. Right, because the ramp has to it can only fall like at such a rate. Right, true. Super long ramp. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. Well, so you'll talk to. I will. Okay. Uh, Jacobson Elementary Playground Improvements and Grant Application. You asked for this, Jacob. I did. Okay, so um, Lindsay um, Morris Come on. talked to me about this that some of the playground equipment at Jacobson for the handicapped kids is like a swing, and so they. They can't play with anybody. <laughs> you know, they they're wanting to add some uh, playground equipment that both the disabled kids and the able-bodied kids can play together on, rather than segregate them away from everybody else. Um, they are applying for a grant from the Foster Barkema mm -hmm. Trust, and there was some sort of like wording that said, and you have already got the approval of the school board to do this, and they're like, ooh, no, not really. <laughs> so uh, they, they just wanted us to be aware that they are seeking money to take care of this playground equipment, and if they get the money, then all the ducks are in a row, and the, the school board is aware of it and has approved it. Lindsay did meet with me, and we kind of talked about some of the needs in the playground. Am I saying this right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. yeah. There was some there's some newer stuff that they'd like to buy. There's a couple things in the playground that don't really work 100 percent anymore, and they're having trouble, you know, fixing or repairing. And Corey would say, "I'd be glad to just take those out and replace them with if you get some new things." And but all of it depends on getting a grant. And, and uh, I think we'd like to look at at uh, the uh, texture that's on the that's underneath the. Mm -hmm. The playground coming too. It's it's nice. It's soft. It's it's very easy to uh, work with, but it's a mess. Mm -hmm. I mean, it comes in the building. It's all over the place. Um, I, the parks there. I've been in parks now because of the grandkids. Um, they, they're using us the same kind of material, but it's like a sheet material. So it's soft and it's pliable, but it comes in just big sheets, and they just lay it around the equipment. So it's doesn't it, track. It doesn't track in. It doesn't. Yeah. You, know, you can just clean it, sweep it off. And it comes it's in sheets or well, yeah. I've heard it. They, there's some types that lay like almost like concrete. Or something. I think I think they lay it like in um, it's soft, almost like asphalt. They just yeah. lay it and then it, then it 
hardens or but it really is soft. They use it, they have the West Park in Mason City. It's really okay. cool stuff. And it doesn't look particularly expensive. I don't think they spent a ton of money on and it. Some of it can be quite colorful and pretty. It's, too. That, it's green and red and yellow is the one Ooh. in West Park. It's very very colorful. So Tolerate blue and green. You can do blue and green. You can do blue and green. Is it good in the winter too? Oh, yeah. Or does it stay soft? Well, I mean, no? At some point it doesn't say soft, but <laughs> soft, soft. But it's 20 below. Yeah, when it's 20 below. But, it, but once it gets, once the snow gets off it, it's nice. It's, it comes back, you don't have to replace it. Mm. It, goes, it stays for years. And, it, it is pricey, but for liability concerns, it more than saves you. Sure. Cost. And I think the PTO, that's the organization that mm -hmm. she's right. representing, PTO's not just she herself. Um, they just, I think they're asking for like $9,000 or something from Foster Park, and, that, and they didn't want it to be that we're going to get this stuff, and if we get the grant, great, and if we don't, you guys are on the hook for $9,000 worth of playground equipment. So, um, I pretty much made sure it was in the, in yeah. the correct order that way. Yes. So, I think we had money for that. Right. Good. Nice gesture. Uh, all right, so that's D. E is IASB Delegate Assembly and Annual Convention. I just put that on there in case anybody would like to talk about anything. Uh, Jackie's going to be representing the board at the Delegate Assembly. And by the way, I'm going to give you an update tomorrow in your uh, weekly notice. I was mistaken about Friday's activities at the convention. <coughs> Friday is just Board President's Day. Uh -huh. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. really? There's not a. Yeah, there's not a. Uh, so then, basically Thursday. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much just it. it's one full day. That's pretty much it. And Wednesday afternoon. There are some activities, some early bird stuff on Wednesday afternoon. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, three different levels of school finance, which are very good, and uh, I think a couple other things. And I cannot go on Friday. So if no anyone problem. wants to pretend to be me and go. <laughs> so you can go Thursday? <laughs> I can go Wednesday and part of Thursday. Okay. You can go in the morning on Thursday? Mm -hmm. You and I have breakfast on Thursday. I saw that. Okay. Maybe yeah. share the price will be on Yeah, maybe. I'll go try to be in the fields. <laughs> oh, that's, well, hopefully that'll be done. Late start. Late finish. <laughs> okay. And F is board comments and future agenda planning. Is there anything that you guys want to see on a future? Agenda? Page 39 is a sample, is a quick preview of next month's agenda. Yeah, did you guys see that? Yeah. Next month. Okay. I'm going to ask. Uh, I'm going to ask John Swenson to uh, give an update on the condition of his vehicles, and he may recommend. He will likely recommend the purchase of a new bus. And uh, middle of the winter is a good time to get the specs approved and start ordering another bus as well. We can take out D2 and 3 because we waived those readings. You bet. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the policy and stuff that came up here recently that you emailed us about with your authority to be able to grant, I mean, I would really like to see us in the near future. See, is there any way we can review that or change that? or Not if it's contract language. Okay. We're locked in on that. Yeah, we're locked in for two years mm -hmm. on that. But I think we've given him yes. flexibility. I feel very good about it, you bet. Yeah. Good. As, as long as you feel comfortable with the, with the way we're handling it, that's fine. Good, thank you. But I think it's one of the things we got to try to get out of the contract in two years. Well, and in two years, Who yeah. knows? there'll be other <laughs> stuff too. But I mean, you know, it just, I it just doesn't sit right with me. Well, yeah, so I'm sure they'll be open to creating flexibility too. Mm -hmm. It's in their benefit. Oh yeah, absolutely. There's another item that I will discuss it at another time, but there's just a lot of stuff that's either permissive or required or no longer able to be in contracts, and when we get closer to that point, we'll find what all those I understand that some of you went to a seminar or 
Yes. <coughs> Be yep. able to help us. Yeah. That would be oh, like a really good topic for a school board retreat when it gets closer to us having to renegotiate contracts. Good. Because there's a lot of information and a lot of changes. Yes. If, we, if, if we don't have a budget problem first with the state. <clears throat> also true. Okay. All right. So let's move on to item eight which is a closed session for the superintendent evaluation and we need to vote in open session to go into closed session by roll call vote. Well, we need a motion. Okay. All right. I'll make a motion. Okay, so you're moving to go into closed session. Closed session, yes. Okay. Rick? All seconds. Yes. Larry Berkman? Yes. Mark Schlesinger? Yes. Sharon Zarkman? Teresa Moseman? Rick McDaniel? Yes. Jane Turner? Yes. <clears throat> okay, so the board is voted to go into closed session.